that's better. Nice teamwork. <laughs> Just in time. Just a little something. Think nothing of it. You're the best. <laughs> Okay, let's hop over to Natasha here. Natasha is your four-star physical abundance character, abundance meaning healer. She is your only guaranteed healer in the game, so I would heavily recommend leveling her up. In terms of light cones, let's go ahead and take a look at the light cone list. First and foremost, we do have the five-star time waits for no one. Let's jump in and take a look at this. You're automatically increasing the wearer's max HP by 18% and your outgoing healing by 12%. Basically, just a two-in-one right there. Very good. Whenever the wearer heals allies, record the amount of outgoing healing, right? When an ally launches an attack, a random attacked enemy takes additional damage equal to 36% of the recorded outgoing healing value. So you're also not only increasing your own max HP and outgoing healing, but increasing the damage that gets dealt from an additional ally to a random enemy. I'd recommend running that if you have it. Some four star light cones though, if you do not, we have post-op conversation. You're automatically increasing the wearer's regeneration rate by 8%, which is good for Natasha because then you can keep popping your alt, which is her AoE heal, and increasing the outgoing healing by their ultimate by 12%. We have shared feelings here. Increase the wearer's outgoing healing by 10%. So pretty much not even just for their ultimate, even for their E that takes effect for. Whenever the user uses their skill, regenerates two energy for all allies. So you also have outgoing healing for everything all and E ability on top of whenever you do use your E, you will be rege regenerating energy too for all allies. So energy regeneration, a battle pass light cone, warmth, shortens cold nights. This is also really good. Increase the wearer's max HP by 16%. When using basic attacks or skills, restore all allies HP by an equal to or an amount equal to 2% of their respective max HP. You have that as an option. I'd recommend the four stars before this one, first of all, because I like the Hunt, Harmony, and Erudition Battle Pass light cones if you are selecting any. So I'd 100% recommend post op, conversation, shared feelings, or even perfect timing. Perfect timing increases the wearer's effect resist by 16%. Effect resist is basically being able to resist debuffs from enemies, aka bleed, wind shear, freeze, things like that, all right? And as long as your healer has more effect resist and they're out of the danger zone, you're able to save your damage dealers and all your other characters. You need them with effect resist, in my opinion. So as you're building effect resist, you're also increasing your outgoing healing by an amount that is equal to 33% of your effect resist 27 at max level for super and post. this is a gotcha weapon so keep that in mind these are pretty much my top two at the moment now if you don't have any of those that i just mentioned right post op perfect timing or time waste for no one you do have a three star alternative for light cones whenever the wearer uses their skill or ultimate which natasha is both healing abilities their outgoing healing will be increased by 12 percent or 24 percent at superimpose 5 which should be very easy to get superimpose 5 because it is a three-star light cone so let's dive into the traces for natasha really quick um and talk about trace priority things that you should be upgrading first now let's take a look at the skills skill ability i believe is the first thing that you should be upgrading here basically her bread and butter restores a single ally for 8.3 percent of her hp plus an additional more restores the ally for another percentage of natasha's max hp at the beginning of their turn for two turns so i'd recommend that as well as their ultimate very simple heals all allies for a certain percentage plus an additional bit more and then her talent when healing allies with hp percent at 30 percent or lower increases natasha's outgoing healing by 30 percent so you're going to focus on the skill into the alt into the talent the auto attack isn't really something you want to focus on now unless you have like a e6 natasha we'll get into that a little bit later on but focus on those three for now in terms of bonus abilities you're going to be able to get this first bonus ability once you level up this is a hundred percent i feel like i want to, i don't want to say must but a good bonus ability to get for natasha you're removing one debuff from a targeted ally aka she is a cleanser so if one of your characters get frozen and they have an ultimate that you desperately need to use before an enemy's big attack you can cleanse that character pop the ultimate save your team right next bonus ability would be healer natasha's outgoing healing bonus will be just increased by another 10 percent very simple but also very good and then last but not least, we have recuperation, increase the duration of the skills, continuous healing effect 
for one turn so instead of two turns it'll be three turns really lovely as well so all in that order and you're pretty much going to be able to get those anyways based off of your character ascension you'll be unlocking them as you go quickly moving on to the relics here she's an abundance character this will be very easy to talk about relics you are going to be provided a free three piece and four piece healing set passerby of wandering cloud would i i would recommend as her signature best in slot you're increasing your outgoing healing by 10 percent for the two piece and at the start of the battle immediately regenerate one skill point you basically want to keep using natasha her auto attack to generate skill points for your team and then only heal when absolutely necessary because your team might be a little skill point hungry if with natasha continuously healing this is really good because you're automatically generating one instead or one back at the start your main stat here is always going to be hp for the headpiece this is always going to be attack percent for the body you can get by with outgoing healing or hp percent personally i'm using outgoing healing at the moment and then for the boots you can also interchange them with either hp or speed depending on how fast you want to go for your team overlap continuously use your abilities farm skill points with their uh, auto attack ability etc as for the set here for the spheres i would recommend going with fleet of the ageless you're increasing your max hp by 12 percent and whenever the wearer speed reaches 120 or higher all allies attack increases by eight percent this is what you're mostly going to be running on basically all your support characters because of that attack increase and it stacks as well so you can run on multiple characters in the same team comp and generate more attack percent for your damage dealer uh, this is part of the reason why I recommended you could either run speed or HP for Natasha because you want to at least hit that 120 threshold. But for the substats, I would recommend HP as one of the first substats. That's the priority. Again, effect resistance. So you're able to negate those debuffs as a second priority. Third, speed. If you're able to get that speed up there for the two-piece effect of Fleet of the Ageless. And then four would be defense percent. So you have HP percent, effect resist, speed, defense percent. Just to stay alive, you are the healer. If you die, the team dies. Very important to stay alive there. I also forgot to mention the main stat for your sphere is going to be HP percent. And then for the rope, this is the only way you're able to get energy regeneration rate. This is the only main stat you're able to find it. So I would recommend running energy regeneration rate. You're going to find this on most of your support characters, basically, so you can keep getting your alt continuously. Currently, I'm running on Japard, but you would also want to run it on Natasha just to make sure you get that back. All right, let's quickly hop over and finish up with Aelons here. So we have our E1 after being attacked at the HP percent. This is a pretty good Aelon to get because basically when Natasha is on the brink of death, she'll bring herself back. So what it reads is after being attacked, if the current HP percent is 30% or lower, she will heal herself for one time to restore HP equal to amount 15% of her max HP. This effect can only be triggered one time per battle, technically like a second life you know when she's about to die and then you can save your e ability and your alt for like a different character her e2 however whenever natasha uses her ultimate grants continuous healing for one turn to allies whose hp is at 30 percent or lower so this is a very good adelon to pick up if you did end up getting lucky and at the beginning of their turn their hp is restored by an amount equal to six percent of natasha's hp plus 160 so i think one and two are probably the best adelons here now if we are getting a little bit into meme territory here this one's also not bad after being it's actual regenerate five energy doctor's grace e6 here you're able to technically essentially turn natasha into a damage dealer natasha's basic attack additionally deals physical damage equal to 40 percent of her max hp so more max hp she has more physical damage and then you could essentially level up that trace the basic attack and start dishing out some damage dps natasha i don't know how many people had natasha as their last character alive but maybe with a dps natasha she could have finished the job if you don't have a e6 natasha I'd recommend not leveling this up. If you do have an E6 Natasha, you know, maybe the memes are there. Maybe you want to try it out. I unfortunately do not have an E6 Natasha to try and test that for you, but the idea is there. In terms of team comps, team comps are very simple. She's an abundance character. She's your only free abundance character. You're going to be running her in a majority of your team comps, if not all of your team comps. You don't need to run her in all of your team comps. So for an example, um, you could run like Zila. She's the current limited five-star quantum hunt character, single target. You could run her with like Asta, well, and probably like a shielder, and you never have to worry about healing. The enemy's never gonna get a turn, right? But 
nine times out of ten you will be running natasha in your team comps so keep that in mind but that concludes the natasha rundown the deep dive into her let me know what you guys think let me know your thoughts down below hope this video is helpful or informative in some way let me know who you want to see next and i'll see you guys in the next one